we begin to continue faith promise you need to go back and review and to listen to all the videos to all the audio prior to tonight you need to you cannot just jump in this one and say brother Stolly said this because you'd be fine to be a liar because you have not listened to the whole course you also need a King James Bible or you will be wrong. We've talked about much, and we're just going to get right into this study because I'm going to rely on you to go and review the lessons. We talked about last time pride of the pastor, pride of the church. Now we're going to look at pride amongst church members. As you turn to Matthew 6. 1 through 4, I'm going to tell you something about pride. Pride is never, is never of God. It is never a characteristic of God. It is never part of God. And God never shows pride. God will say, well done, rather than I'm proud of you. Pride is of Satan. He is over he is the king over the children of pride. Pride is not an attribute attribute of God at all. All right, pride amongst church members. Right there that tells you it's a sin. Everything we've been doing is a sin about this study. I mean faith promise has been a sin, not the study. The study is to reveal to you using the Bible, using their words, that you need to come to the conclusion, would God honor? Here is one more reason that filling out your faith promise cards is not scriptural. How does it fit with Matthew 6, 1-4? through 4? Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them, Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory of man. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The glory of man is the reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy right hand know what thy left hand is doing, that thy alms may be in secret, and thy father which sees in secret himself shall reward thee openly. A person is not to give money in front of others to impress them, or that there will be no heavenly reward. Now, I've heard of churches where you go into and they have the, the, the money dance, the money march. And they start off with, you know, all those who want to give a dollar and they play the bands. And you go up and you put your dollar in. Then they go up and they do the five dollar music, play a little better, and they go give their five dollars. And they'll go all the way up to the guy who gives a hundred, gets two hundred dollars, or if not even more. Hey, look at me, look what I'm doing. It's a sin. It's a sin. Hey, people, look at me. I'm putting it in the plate. Listen, when you put something in that plate just because people are watching you, that's a sin. When people, For people to see you giving, that's your reward. A person is not, a person not to give money in front of others to impress them, or there will be no heavenly reward. But also great care is to be taken not to glory in personal amounts given to the Lord. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Thy arms may be in secret. How can you give with one hand and your other hand not know it? What does that mean? Have you ever asked yourself that? When you count money, you normally use both hands to do it. One hand holds the money while the other hand is used to take the individual pieces of money 
one by one and count it. If your left hand does not know what your right hand is giving, then it means you are not counting the total. You are just giving as there is a need and as God enables and leads you to give. You ever just reach down your pocket, grab a bunch of whatever you got in there, and put it in the plate or the box or the person? Have you ever opened up your bill phone and just grab and give it to it? Or have you opened up your bill phone, grab everything out? Oh, I say five, ten, we've got a couple hundred to use that. Oh, here's a dollar bill. You go in your pocket, you, you unwad the money. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here's five dollars. How about just grabbing the money out of your pocket, taking some out, and just open up your wallet again, take some out, and let the Lord be the guidance. And don't put your name on it, let no one know, and don't claim it for the IRS. I think claiming tithes, this is me personally, I think claiming tithes for the IRS, I think you, you gained your, your reward, you won't get it in heaven. You've already taken a, you're already taking a reward for the money when you claim it on your form for the IRS. You think God's going to say, okay, no, I don't think so. I think it's a sin to give to tell the IRS what you give to the Lord. This is the exact opposite of what faith promise giving teaches. In that system, your left hand does know what your right hand is giving. Because you have the set amount of you have the set amount of money already. You already know what you promised for that week or that month. So you gotta count it out. If I'm going to give fifty dollars every month, well fifty dollars. Write the check out. Okay, see, fifty dollars. You go in your pocket. I need fifty dollars. Got to count it out. There would be a definite amount firmly in mind, and would tempt the person to boast about amount given, whether just in the heart and mind, or outwardly with the mouth. I gave my faith promise this week. Okay? I gave it this month. I wonder if they over there give faith promise like I give. Probably don't. Because I've been around Baptist long enough to know. Which would take away your heavenly reward for giving? These verses are clear about giving. If we want earthly praise, then that is our reward, the praise. And there will be no heavenly reward. If you seek for people to pat you on the back, that is your re eternal reward. Enjoy it. But if you do something for the Lord that it doesn't attract attention. Now, when we go on the streets, we don't go on the streets for people to see us. What I mean is we're not there, hey, look at what we're doing. Hey, here we go. Do it. We do it for the Lord. Now, there will be people who come along will shake our hands or, or give us word of testimony or pat you on the back. Now, we didn't ask for those people to do that. That doesn't lose a, a heavenly reward. That's encouragement. But when we go out on the streets just for people to see us and do the ministry just for people to see us and to get people to look at us, that's your reward. And it's a sorry thing. And it's another study that you need to really study and you need to really look into why and the motive you're doing things because you may think you're going to get a reward in heaven, but if your motive is wrong, you're not going to get it. All right, we looked at pride as a result of faith promise giving system. Number two. Depth, surety is a result of the faith promise giving system. Debt and surety. When people try to say that faith giving is promising to give to God an amount of money which you presently cannot see or do or have, this is not faith giving. 
but is by definition a different financial term called surety, S-U-R-E-T-Y. And the Bible clearly warns us to not become surety. What if I told you to go out and commit adultery? Well, the Bible says thou shalt not commit adultery. All right. The Bible also says you're not to be part in surety. Well, surety from the we Merriam Webster's Dictionary. A formal en engagement as a pledge given for the fulfillment of an undertaking, guarantee, as basis of confidence or security. A formal engagement as a pledge given for the fulfillment of an undertaking guarantee a basis of confidence or security. Now turn to Proverbs chapter 6. That was the definition of surety. Proverbs 6, 1 through 5. My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Your mouth has become a trap. You've caught a defenseless animal or a person with a trap. You caught yourself with your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the land, hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. You better make sure that guy is your friend. Give not sleep to thy eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roll from the hand of the hunter. Now imagine, here's a guy, he's out in the field, he's got his eyes set on, on a deer, and you imagine a deer walks up to him and says, Hi, eat me. As a bird from the hand of the fowler, a guy goes out, he's trying to catch uh, birds for, you know, here it would have been for the temple. Not as pets as we have today, but if you you know you want to go out and catch a bird for a bird cage for your home, and you you you're there, you got the nets all set, the bread comes or whatever that bird like, and the bird comes to on your shoulder and says, "Hi, put me in a cage." You say, "Well, how?" Yeah, but that's what the Bible says. If you got surety, you are to go deal with that guy, and make sure he's your friend, and you are to go to the person that. The money is to be paid to and say, hey, we need to get things right right now. I have signed a debt. I have signed a pledge. I have gone undertaking a guarantee of something. We need to get this right right now. That's what Proverbs 6, 1 through 5 is saying. If you have become surety for a financial matter, you are snared with the words of your mouth. You have entered a trap. The Bible tells you to go as quickly as possible to get out of that bad situation. Proverbs 11.15 So if surety is for faith promise giving, you are to go to your pastor immediately. You are to get this financial matter settled. You have guaranteed to give money, right? Surety, a formal engagement as a pride given for the fulfillment of an undertaking, guarantee a basis of confidence or security. You still read the dictionary, right? Proverbs 11.15 He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it. And he that hated surety ship is sure. Only, 
only, only a fool will, somebody they don't know will sign some kind of agreement or guarantee. You are a fool if you do that and the guy is a stranger. Imagine a guy will come now knocking on my front door. Uh, I need to get a car. I'm good. Uh, this, this guy's down here selling me a car down at this lot. He wants me to get a loan. Good. Can you come down and sign it for me? No. <laughs> now, hate surety ship. I had a case in my life, and I've got a couple witnesses saying, that they wanted me to put my signature down for a bond of money. And this person threw a sissy fit and all that because I wouldn't do it. And I said, listen, the Bible forbade me to do it. You want me to put my money down on somebody who's in jail and for a bond? You've got to be kidding me. Especially the charges that were to be thereof. No. No. There's no character. There's no trust. He that hated surety ship is sure. I will not sign cold loans. I've never asked my parents to do it. Because if the person don't pay, you pay. Proverbs 17, 18. You are to hate surety ship. Now my tongue is getting tired. Forgive me. So if you are to hate it, according to Proverbs 5, 11, 15, if you turn to Proverbs 17, and this surety ship and surety matches faith, promise, giving, and the Bible by the Holy Spirit says you're to hate it, what do you think the Holy Spirit says about faith, promise? If it matches the definition. Proverbs 17, 18, a man void of understanding. Void, empty. The striketh hands. How do you do? Good, I'll sign that loan. Nice to meet you. A shaking hands. And become his surety in the presence of his friend. Some will argue that faith promise giving is not becoming surety for a debt. Please look back at the definition for surety on the previous page. I'll read it again. Ready? I'll read this thing so often that it'll become a memory dictionary verse for you. Surety, a formal engagement as a pledge given for the fulfillment of an undertaking, guarantee, a basis of confidence or security. Please look back to the definition of surety on the previous page. Then notice the following statement from those who teach faith promise giving. It is clearly a surety for a debt, a debt to God. Now, I'm not talking doo-doo here. I'm, we are going to quote from these people. Having a typical definition of faith promise giving. And I quote, start the quote, a faith promise is a promise, promise to give based upon a person's faith in God's provision. In making a faith promise, a believer looks to God in faith, asking him how much he or she should promise to give, promise to give, and then committing to God, to give as God provides. End of quotation. When a person makes a faith promise, it is indeed a promise to God. What if you do not fulfill it? Take your Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Verses 1 and 2. You promise to God to give something. What do you call it? 
promise. While you turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, I'm going to read that surety definition again. A formal engagement as a pledge given for the fulfillment of an undertaking, guarantee, a basis of confidence or security. Now, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. What, I'm not supposed to walk in the, in the house of God? We'll get into that in a second. Be more ready to hear. Let's see what these things are here for right here. Hearing. Then to get the sacrifice of fools. Ooh. You want to be a fool? For they consider not that they do evil. There are some people who are doing something, but they don't realize they're doing it wickedly. It's evil. There are Christians out there, well, I do this, and they have no idea that it's going to burn up with the judgment seat of Christ. It's not going to get a reward. Be not rash. You know what a rash is? It starts off and it can spread. You know, it starts off with, you just open it a little bit and it gets bigger. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thy heart be hastily to utter anything before God. God, I'm going to give $100 next week. And the week after, every week, I'm going to give $100. Can I have a pledge card? Hey, over here. Me, give me a pledge card. I'm going to put money on it, people. Hi. To utter anything before God, for God is in heaven. And thou upon the earth. You're just a little pity little squat. If you think you're important, pay somebody to go to the moon. And while they're on the moon, have them look at the earth and tell you exactly where you are on that earth when he's standing on the moon. That's how important you are. You're just a piece of dust. Especially to God. Therefore, let thy words be few. The exceptions of Baptist women in the nursery. Let their words be few. All right, verses 4 through 6. When thou vowest a vow unto God. What's a vow? I'm going to give $100 this week. I'm going to give 500 every month. Oh, Lord, if you get me out of this foxhole, I'll do what Mama wanted me to do. I'll preach the gospel, and I'll do, I'll be in church every Sunday. Oh, Lord, God, if you help me out of this problem, I will never spend money on that again, Lord. Oh, man, Lord, get me out of this trouble. That's a vow. How about this vow? I do. That's a vow. How about telling someone in the church you're going to do, help them out, you're going to do something for them, and you don't? How about this vow? I'll pray for you, brother. And you, you totally forget. I've been guilty of that one. Telling someone I pray for about them and forget. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. Ooh. He, he ha, for he has no pleasures in full. So if you don't pay your debt, remember when we got to go back to these videos before. If you can't do it, you ask God to forgive you. Give God his excuse, and he'll forgive you maybe of the debt. No, the Bible says if you don't pay what you tell him, what you don't give what you're going to what you tell him to give, the Bible calls you a fool. You know what the Bible says about a fool? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Counts you as an atheist. Because if you really love God, you would fear that big mouth. You would fear what you say to God. And that you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The wisdom would be to shut your mouth. For it has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Now, if you go back to the other videos, if you can't do it, just give God your excuse and he may let you. No. 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 That's a violation of Scripture. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow, don't do it, than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to, to cause thy flesh to sin. 
Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. I'm going to say something that we're done with this verse. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands? I was going to say something that I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, I know what I'm going to say. How many people have sinned according to verses 1, 2, 4, and 6 through faith promise that God is now calling them a fool? Now God has is, is, is destroyed the work of their hands, and they have been sinning because some preacher from the pulpit said, Get this somehow. Let's talk last year's. Come on, fill out your card. It's not your pledge. It's just a promise. And if you can't do it, just give God an excuse. Come on, all. Everybody want a card? Raise their hand. How many people have sinned? Because it is nonsense. How many people actually think they're doing something for God? They're doing God a favor, and when they stand before the judgment seat of Christ, whoosh! What happened? Where did my sin? Well, how can it be sin, the pastor? Yeah. The pastor. Out of the flock of a congregation of church, I wonder who's going to be judged first. The flock, then the pastor, or the pastor, then the flock. I'm going to tell you something right now that may shock you. Your pastor may not even be in heaven. Second Chronicles, I'm Second Corinthians chapter 11. He may be of Satan. All right, now, next. What has made credit cards so popular with both business and banks? What are you bringing that up for? Think of many headaches associated with credit cards. People often charge more on them than which they can make the payment and then end up declaring bankruptcy. Credit cards are frequently stolen and items are purchased with them before the customer can call his or her bank. Added to this, each store loses a little profit on each credit card sale as a service fee to the bank who holds the card. You know when you use that card, the store has to make a fee to the credit card company for you making that transaction? That's why prices are so high. Consider all of the above. The more negative aspects of credit cards could, get, could be given. Why would any bank or store get involved with such a system? Because people buy more on credit than they do with cash. Listen, if I walked in the store, I remember the olden days. As a little boy, I was born in 1968, September 6th. I remember as a little boy, my mom would give me money to go get stuff. She'd give me a little list. i go up to the counter, and before five items I put there, she rings it up. I look at the money that mama gave me, and it wasn't enough. For whatever reason, maybe it was going up, or mama didn't give me enough. She misfigured. I had to put something back. I had to put something back where the money I had could pay for what I what was on the counter. Then go home and say, Mom, this is the receipt. Okay? And I, if that product was needed, I have to go back with more money or another time. Well, with a credit card, I ain't got the money. So I'll buy five more, more things, ten more, more things, and put it on the counter with what I can't already afford and just give them the credit card. In the end, the stores sell more when people buy on credit. So they make more money overall on sales. Problem is they don't because the credit card bills haven't been paid yet. But in the principle. The banks also do well because people buy more than they can pay off at the end of the month. No. Really? You mean no one, when they get their credit card bill, no one pays it right off right away? I think that's called what? Minimum due? Minimum amount due? 
That means that those people are charged interest on the unpaid balance. Usually at a high rate of interest. Oh, yeah. They take interest in your interest. Which brings the bank profit. And they give you a penny every month for your interest. Where they take out $12 from your interest so they can make a profit. So despite the bankruptcies with which the bank must contend, overall they still make out very well in the credit card system. Now you say, why did you talk about that? Because I like to talk. I'm a preacher. I won't shut up. All right, we're done, right? No, we're not done. I just want to look ahead and see what we got. Oh, boy, we still got a lot more lessons than this. Oh, you want me to continue? I'm sorry. I went off somewhere. We are talking about credit cards. and What does that have to do with faith promise? Now we're going to read Oswald J. Smith's statement again. I quote, this is a guy who's involved with faith promise. Oswald J. Smith, I quote, I would never go back to the cash offering. With a cash offering, I could only give, excuse me, I can only get a very little. But with a faith promise offering, I can get much. In our annual missionary convention, we never get more than $7,000 in cash. But we get a quarter of a million or more from faith promises. End of quote. Faith promise offering by Oswald J. Smith. I'm going to quote these at the end of this video. If you listen to this on SermonNet, if you go to YouTube and look up my name, you can see these on video and you'll see the websites, the quotes, and where you can get these books from Liberty Bible Course, which I recommend you get them. They're excellent books. It's just not this subject. There's a whole bunch of series of subjects. They are wonderful. They are 100% Bible doctrine. Liberty Bible Course, Liberty Bible Church, and they do a wonderful thing. I'll give you the information at the end of this um, <clears throat> video. But back to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Oswald J. Smith found a gold mine humanly speaking, when he introduced giving missions on a credit plan. I'm going to read what he said again. I'm going to quote him again. I feel like repeating today. I would never go back to a cash offering. With a cash offering, I could only get very little from the people. But with a faith promise offering, I can get much money. In our animal missionary convention we never get more than seven thousand dollars in cash but we get a quarter of a million or more in faith promises end of quote you don't have to have money today that's okay just give to emissions on credit tell your local church that you will commit to a debt for missions for the next year 365 days and they will spend that money right now. Yeah, uh, excuse me, you can just pay them back on monthly terms. Isn't that a credit card? When you say, I'm going to give a certain amount every month, well, that's when you get the bill from the credit card company, pay this amount. Let's say $100. You said every month. Make it even. That's twelve. That's a twelve hundred dollars in a year, three hundred sixty-five days. But you're going to make a hundred dollar monthly installments. You spend a thousand two hundred dollars on your credit card. You get a bill that says you can pay a minimum of a hundred dollar monthly installments. What's the difference? Ones of God. Yeah. Go see a doctor fill that hole in your head. Do churches actually collect all the money that pe all the money that people do churches actually collect all the money that people promise to give? Ready? What, what's the answer? What'd you say? 
What do you think? No, they do not. You need 911? Hello? You need 911? You okay? Get off the floor. I'm telling you the truth. They don't. Statics reveal that it is common for churches to collect only 75 to 80% of the money promised. So they factor in those losses in their budget. Come on! So the church ends up paying for the deadbeat, like the bank ends up paying for the deadbeat of bankruptcy. The church has become a financial institution. Don't you know what the words of the bank they use? There are Bible words, redemption. Collection. 75 to 80 percent of the money that's promised is actually collected. And the churches will figure in their budgets for the uh, 25 to, to 20 to 20 to 25 percent that they lose. So the church picks up the slack for the deadbeats. And then the church screams about how the president misuses tax, do tax dollars, but they're misusing money that people give truly for the work of the Lord. What if you don't, what if you don't believe in faith promise? What if you listen and say, hey, listen, I'm not going to give any more. Hey, brother, you're right. Amen. Glory to God. I was going to give my tithes and offering to the church, but still 25 to 20 to 25 percent of the offering you put in that plate is going to go to faith promise for those people that don't pay their bills to God. Wow. You can be faithful in much and have to support somebody who's not. All right, keep going. But they still find out that they can bring in much money on credit rather than cash. What is that that thing's called that you fill out? Starts with a C, ends with a D, has A R in the middle. It's a card. <laughs> <laughs> Either plastic or paper, it's still a credit card. Faith promise giving and its promise or pledge cards is no different than a promissory note given to banks in years past when taken out a loan. A promissory note, a note containing or conveying a promise or assurance. Marion Westford Dictionary. Have you ever played the game of life, you know, with the little cards and little pink pe pegs and the blue pegs for babies? And you get a loan, you get this little red piece of paper, white, that says a promissory note that end, at the end of the game of life, you got to pay back the money before you find out if you win? It's a piece of paper to say that you borrowed money. <clears throat> We are told that financial problems are one of the biggest causes of marital trouble. Because of that, we teach people to get out of debt. This, is, this would be the church or the Christians. It's probably too, uh, probably spoken true of Liberty Bible. They probably teach their people, don't get in debt, and if you're in debt, get out of it. These people seem to be sound. It's, it sounds like a good church. To look up when you're in Greenville, MI, whatever that state that is. And I'll have the information again, the address and all that at the end. We tell them, do not buy something unless you have the cash. If you cannot use a, if you cannot use a credit card and pay the bill at the end of the month, then cut your credit card so you don't have the temptation to use them. Listen, if your credit card bills are over what you can pay, you need to b boil those credit cards in a flame outside. You need, remember when we read in Proverbs back here about the surety? You need to run 
as soon as possible as a roll in the hand of the hunter, as a bird in the hand of the father. You need to run to the financial place that these people that you owe money say, listen, I'm guilty. How can I work this out to get it right with you? Does it does it not seem very inconsistent to them to, to them to tell those same people to promise to give God amount of money which they do not have? Now imagine a pastor taking you in his office and say, "Listen, you got to knock off the credit card spending. Sit, stop it. Give them to me, and I'll cut them up for you. No more spending money you ain't got." You say, that sounds good. Next Sunday. All right, everyone, how much are you going to give for the next month and all that? You can give weekly or monthly. And the faith promise, how much are you going to give? And it, it's the same thing. It is hypocritical to teach people it is wrong to commit themselves to buying things for which they do not have the cash, and then turn right around and pressure them through preaching to commit themselves to promising to give to God the amount of money they don't have. It is no wonder Christian homes are said to be breaking up at the same rate as the world today, and even more than the world. We are using the same financial scheme that the world uses. <coughs> Excuse me. Thus putting Christian families under the same financial pressure in the church as they face in the world. Never realize that this could be compared to as a credit card, as a loan in a bank, but there it is. Black and white. Scripture forbids. Scripture says you're to hate surety ship. You are a fool if you do not pay what you say you're going to pay. But year after year, this system is brought into the church through the pastor, through the pulpit. May God bless you and may God work things out in your, in your life to do this thing financially and to get rewards in heaven and not here on the earth. 